reaction to go. But a lot of chemical reactions just go all on their own. Anytime a reaction will just go, we call that spontaneous. But if that reaction is a redox reaction, we can use the electricity that is being generated by the transfer of electrons. Consider, for example, if we put a piece of zinc metal into some copper sulfate, like you can see in this particular screen. We notice that the copper sulfate is blue because of the presence of copper plus two ions. So my reactants are zinc in its metallic form and copper plus two ions. Sulfate ions are also present, but they are there as a spectator. What we will see happen after some time is that the solution will turn a paler shade of blue. This tells us that some of the copper ions are being converted into copper metal. I will also see that the zinc starts to get crusted up with copper metal. And if we were in closer to this, we'd actually be able to see this forming as an orangey kind of colored copper powder that would be forming onto this strip. So this reaction will happen where we have zinc turning into zinc plus two ions as the strip erodes and copper ions pulling electrons off of that zinc to form copper metal. So the copper ions are actually taking and pulling electrons off of the zinc that makes copper metal. And when the electrons come off of the zinc, we see that we have zinc ions being formed. Zinc is being oxidized and copper is being reduced. So our two half reactions for this scenario would look like this. I'd have zinc showing as oxidized, gaining the two or lo losing the two electrons, and copper gaining two electrons and being reduced. Now, if you go to your workbooks, the very first page, you've been ignoring it up until now, you'll find a reduction potential chart. Reduction potential is listed as B naught red. This naught, this degree sign, means that we're using standard conditions, standard temperature, standard pressure. Red stands for reduction. And this chart tells us the potential or the likelihood that something will be reduced. The bigger the value, the more likely it will be reduced. If we look up the reduction potentials for the copper and for the zinc, now I want you to be very careful when you look. Everything on this chart is written as a reduction. You'll notice everything is a substance plus electrons. And I have zinc here written as an oxidation. So when you look up their reduction potentials, what I want you to look for is the reactions that have these species in it specifically. So the reaction that has zinc in it specifically, actually written as a, react, as a reduction, is zinc plus two gains two electrons to form zinc metal. The reduction potential for the zinc you'll find at minus 0.76. Looking for the one that has copper and copper plus two ions, and be very specific there, because we've got copper metal to copper one, copper one to copper two, there's lots of possibilities. We want copper two to copper metal. We're gonna find that at positive 0.34 volts. Because we see the copper has the bigger reduction potential, okay, copper is more likely to be reduced. The one with the bigger reduction potential is the one that gets reduced. That's actually what we had happen in this reaction. We saw in our reaction, if we look back a page, that copper was being reduced. We had it going from an oxidation number of plus two to an oxidation number of zero. We saw in the half reaction, copper being reduced. When a reaction goes the way we'd expect it to go, we say that it's spontaneous. 
Now down at the bottom of your page, right here, we have something called our cell notation. Cell notation is a kind of chemical shorthand. It tells us what's happening in the reaction. When we do this chemical shorthand, what we do is we basically shorten my little half reactions. We always start by putting the oxidation half first, separate it from a double line, and then put the reduction half second. We see that zinc was oxidized and that copper was reduced. And we notice that zinc was oxidized from zinc metal to zinc 2, copper was reduced from copper 2, copper metal, and we have this double line that separates them. And we're going to be using this a lot, so I want you to pay attention to how that's used. So what do you think would happen then if we tried it the other way? What if I tried putting copper metal into a solution of zinc sulfate? Well, zinc sulfate is essentially a solution that would contain zinc plus two ions and sulfate minus two ions. So what I'm curious about is, will I get a reaction between copper metal and zinc plus 2? Will I get a reaction between zinc plus 2 and copper metal? The order doesn't matter. If it goes, we would have electrons being transferred from the copper onto the zinc. We would basically see zinc being reduced and copper being oxidized. How do I determine if it'll go? We do it the exact same way that we did with the previous example. Start by checking your reduction potentials. In this case, the reaction won't go. It'll be non-spontaneous. This reaction shows zinc as being reduced, but we would expect copper to be reduced. It's more likely to gain electrons. It has the bigger reduction potential, and the bigger one wins. So this reaction will not go as written. Now, of course, we can force it to go if we do electrolysis, if we use a source of electrical energy and push those electrons off of the copper onto the zinc, but it won't go on its own. So, in the direction that it will go, in the direction that it is spontaneous, we could use this reaction then as an electrochemical cell. If, as zinc's electrons are pulled off, and put onto the copper that forms the copper metal as those electrons come on and the zinc ions. If I can get that to travel through a wire, I will have an electrochemical cell and as those electrons flow, I can actually use that flow of electrons. Now, electrochemical cells are often called voltaic cells and they were named after a person who did a lot of research into this, Alessandro Volta. Um, they're also called galvanic cells. And they've got a few distinct parts. We're going to separate our two half reactions by something called a salt bridge. And a salt bridge is literally a bridge made out of salt. And it allows the ions to pass through, but isn't going to allow our reaction to mix. In the example where I put the um, piece of metal right into the solution, those electrons traveled right at the site, so we never got to use them. So we have to separate them. We're also going to have a couple of electrodes. And just like in our previous lesson, oxidation happens at the anode, and reduction always happens at the cathode. Remember, oxidation is where I lose electrons. Reduction is where I gain them. This is an example of how we would set up a voltaic cell. We start by having two beakers. Each beaker is going to contain the ingredients in the half reaction. We can see that we knew zinc was going to be my oxidation. So I'm going to need to have zinc as its metal form. And you can see that I've got a strip of zinc metal right here. That is my anode. And I'm going to need zinc in its ion plus two four. And you can see that I've got it in a solution of zinc ions. So what would provide for me a solution of zinc ions? Well, I could have zinc chloride or zinc nitrate or any kind of a soluble zinc substance. On the other side, on my reduction side, 
I need copper two ions, which could come from copper chloride, copper nitrate, whatever would be a good soluble source of copper. And I'm going to need copper metal. So that will be my metal strip of copper. This is going to be my cathode. Now, I attach these two electrodes, the anode and the cathode, in the external circuit by using a wire. In the wire, electrons always travel from anode to cathode every time. But electricity won't travel unless there's a completed circuit. Eventually, so many electrons would end up on this side of the cell that it would build up potential and stop the reaction. So we create a salt bridge. And this salt bridge that you see here connecting my two beakers is literally just a glass tube full of some kind of salt. And what that allows us to do is balance the charges. So as we have a buildup of negative on this side, the positive sodium ions will come to neutralize that so we don't end up having an overall abundance of negative here. And as electrons get pulled off of the zinc here, um, the negative nitrates will come back in so I don't end up with a very high positive charge of zinc ions forming here. So this is my electrolytic cell and it would actually look something like this. And you can see what's happening here in the little expanded diagrams. You can see that on the zinc side, each little zinc atom in this anode will have electrons coming off of it. Those electrons are going up and through the wire. And now that the zinc that is right here has lost the electrons, it has a plus two charge, and it is now floating around in the solution. Ions are always floating around in solution. Then those electrons continue to travel through the circuit. They travel down onto the copper cathode. And at the copper cathode, those electrons will attach themselves to copper ions. So we've got copper plus two ions are attracted to it. The electron and the copper join together to form copper metal. Because we're forming new metal at the cathode, you'll notice that my cathode starts to get thicker as new copper atoms are plated onto it. Because my zinc is losing electrons going into solution, we can see that it's basically being eroded away at the anode. As my electrons get pulled off of the zinc, or you can almost think of being pushed off of the zinc and pulled onto the copper, we get a total voltage being generated of 1.1 volts. Now, remember, we said the reduction potential for zinc was negative 0 0.76, and the reduction potential for copper was positive 0 0.34. Because copper had the bigger one, it would stay reduced. Zinc's going to be oxidized. So to change a reduction potential into an oxidation, you flip it. If the reduction potential is 0 0.76, then its oxidation potential is equal to positive 0 0.76. You'll notice that the only thing that we have changed is the sign. Oxida oxidation is opposite of reduction. So what I'm seeing happening here is that we're pushing electrons. Each of these electrons is being pushed with 0 0.76, a push here. And it's being pulled with 0 0.34, a pull there. 0 0.76 and 0 0.34, they're going in the same direction, adds up to 1.1 volts in total. And that's what we're notice being measured on my voltmeter. What I'm going to get you guys to do is to see if you can write and balance the half reactions for a chemical reaction, a redox reaction that I give you. And then using the reduction potentials, decide if it's spontaneous, is the correct one being actually oxidized and the correct one being reduced. We expect the one with a higher value to be reduced. And then I want you to be able to draw and label the voltaic cell for that reaction and give me the shorthand. In your textbook, 
on pages 708 to 717. They're going to review this with you. Also, there's going to be more questions for you to practice, numbers 1 through 13. You'll find those on pages 716 and 717.